Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Ackerman. We have now, as we got started a bit late, we have about 20, a little over 20 minutes left for discussion. I think that uh, SRSG Peter Southern is still online, so why don't we take a, a couple of questions first and then give him an opportunity to respond and then the rest of the panel. So who would like to be first? Uh, I see he here is a question. Yes, you have the floor. Please. Um, let me first thank the panelists for a very interesting um, discussion. And it did. Um, when we look at the MDGs, I think the point was well made. But at the time when the MDGs were being made, they didn't benefit from the thorough inter intergovernmental process. And in any case, if you recall rightly, in, two, in the year 2000, I mean, not many people had much hope that the MDGs were leading, well, would lead to anything at all. So the sort of enthusiasm which we now see was not there, let's be honest. And it's thanks to the success of the MDGs that we are having the SDGs going through this thorough process. And I must say, for the past two meetings, council meetings of IOM, we had mentioned the desire that migration goes into the, into the SDGs. And I must congratulate all those who have worked hard to reach to where we are today and to what um, um, Ambassador Swing has shown us, it seems, things seem to be moving in the right direction. But I think we should not rest on our oars, because what we have seen now, we've seen the goals, we've seen the targets, very ambitious, but the devil is going to be in the details. And I think that's why the vigilance is called for even more so than what we, we did to get them in the goals and in the, in the targets. So basically, I would like to say thanks, of course, now we have a formidable international structure ad addressing migration. And um, there would be challenges, of course, because when we say, from what we have had here today, is that to actually put these implementation and indicators in place would have to struggle against policies which are not migration um, friendly. All these are, on the, are there, and you could see resistance because of that. You could envisage resistance. And the question I ask, I want to ask is, I mean, I think everybody has to be geared. Everybody that's working on migration should be geared to face these challenges. But the vigilance is there. And I just wanted to ask, how would you see that from now until the time when these would go um, next year to the General Assembly, how would you address some of these real challenges which go deep into migration laws, etc., which would have to be addressed if we want migration to play its role in development. Thank you. I have two more uh, speakers, uh, the Netherlands followed by Mexico. Thank you, Ambassador Swing. My uh, question nicely complements uh, that of Her uh, Excellency, the Ambassador of uh, Sierra Leone. Um, the Netherlands has been actively engaged in the discussions around uh, uh, the outcome uh, document. Um, we, uh, we support uh, very much the inclusion of, uh, of migration uh, uh, in, the, in the document. Uh, what we see now, uh, it is mentioned uh, there. The extent, of course, is still uh, under discussion. Uh, I was wondering, the MDGs, they were very much quantifiable. Um, and uh, the question would be, uh, if you look at the sustainable uh, development uh, goals and, uh, and the way uh, migration will be uh, included uh, in there, uh, I would like to ask the speakers, how do they see after uh, um, the adoption of the sustainable development goals, um, how they see it in, in practical terms, how, how can migration really become a factor in development uh, planning? Thank you very much. Uh, Mexico. Thank you, Chair. Director General, thank you very much for your remarks and the organization of the panel. I think the four speakers have been very clear and eloquent. As you have mentioned, we all know that in the Millennium De uh, Development Goals, there was a reference to development uh, 
migration was not included. However, international migration has a positive impact on the development of countries of origin, de, uh, transit, and destination. This has not only been documented, but has been supported by the entire international community, as has been mentioned. One of the more relevant uh, results of the high-level dialogue on migration was precisely this consensus to include migration in the development agenda beyond uh, 2015. As we know, the consensus of this dialogue resulted from a lengthy process which included migration in the development agenda and in, and, and in uh, highlights the relevance of migration for all uh, involved. How, no, no doubt, uh, the discussion in the high-level uh, dialogue and uh, the forum and other uh, fora, and also in the context of the IOM, have been considered in the recommendations which exist in the outcome document on the SDGs, as was mentioned. And this shows that we have made specific and concrete recommendations, as has been mentioned by Ambassador Ackerman, so that migration is indeed included in the development agenda, thanks to the commitment of various groups and experts who have set up a number of specific indicators that are uh, intelligent and measurable, we have at our disposal a number of elements and information which will allow us to move forward. However, I'd like to highlight that the role of uh, IOM in this process has been essential and, and it has uh, contributed its technical and practical knowledge and experience and we know the value of this participation and of course we invite IOM to continue to have a proactive role in this process. Perhaps the most important thing is inclusion of migration in the post-2015 development agenda should be supported by the Council and all member states. And one of the most important issues which we I would like to put to the panel and uh, Mr. Sutherland, once we have this consensus and once we have all these tools at our disposal and that we are convinced that the integral treatment of uh, uh, migration under shared responsibility and shared commitment should be included in the context of human development. What will governments do? We know of the discussions held under the second committee. And we know that this process will continue. It has not ended. And no doubt it will yield further results in September 2015. So the question is, what uh, are governments and states to do? And what can the council do, this council do, to support the entire process? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. I'm going to take uh, take two or three more, and then uh, I'm going to turn it over to the panel for any final comments in the interest of time. So our next speaker is from uh, Distinguished Representative Morocco. Thank you, Director General. I associate my voice with those of my colleagues to thank you for having held this high-level dialogue, which is important since the preparation of the MDGs of 2000. Uh, migration has played a more and more important role at the international level. The number of international migra migrants has uh, gone from uh, 75,000 to 230. 35,000. Many have died before they have reached their destination. We have uh, a, a, a significant increase in remittances. So no doubt the stakes related to migration are important in the context of the post-2015 uh, development agenda. We believe that the SDGs which seek to facilitate migration and uh, orderly, uh, safe management of mi migration with the planned migration policies that are well managed. This is an essential aspect and which uh, 
and therefore IOM should encourage good governance in the area of migration. We believe that the post-2015 development agenda should reflect the fact that many migrants are in vulnerable situations, but they are also an integral part of the solution. Migrants are agents of change. In order to allow migrants to become these agents of change, we should reduce the cost of migration. In order to do this, we need to reduce the exorbitant fees on remittances, combat uh, trafficking human beings, and address all the aspects that have been dealt with in the various papers. We need to, for IOM to play an important role in this regard. Between 2018 and 2012, 140,000 people uh, were displaced because of disasters, and this is an increasing problem that uh, we cannot disregard. With a mandate covering all the aspects of migration, international presence of uh, several thousand uh, offices in hundreds of uh, countries and many years of experience in all the areas of migration, we wish for IOM to play an important role in the evaluation of the uh, post-2015 uh, uh, development agenda SDGs relating to migration. Distinguished Representative Venezuela, followed by Germany. Thank you, Director General. My colleagues have thanked the panelists for their presence already. We do not have a question per se, but we do have a comment on what has already been said this morning. The former uh, Assistant Director General of the ILO, I don't dare to pronounce her name, you have said that we should not reinvent the wheel. We're thinking that perhaps the problem is not the wheel itself, but where we are taking uh, the carriage. And this brings into, this causes us to focus on international instruments, you have said uh, in a frank way that we uh, need to talk about internal displacement. We think that you are right in mentioning this. We say that order begins at home, at home and this is a problem in many of our countries. There are many capitals where this has not been dealt with. Uh, it, it's looked at, but there is no orderly management. So this is no doubt a problem. We believe that there is a connection between internal displacement and migration uh, at, at, a, at a more global level. And so we think that this needs to be discussed uh, further in the future, as you have mentioned. Thank you very much, uh, Distinguished Merci. Representative Germany. Merci, uh, Thank you, Director General, Distinguished uh, Mrs. Keynote Speaker, Distinguished Panelists and Delegates. German, Germany commends today's high-level debate. My delegation thinks we would be, it would be very good for us if we could have some more of what one panelist, panelist called an African Women's Morning. As the deadline for achieving the Million Development Goals approaches, preparations for defining, defining a new UN development framework are getting momentum. We can build on existing recommendations such as the Dakar Declaration of 2013, the high-level dialogue on international uh, <coughs> migration and development, and the report 
on the Open Working Group on the General Assembly on Sustainable Goals, Development Goals. We appreciate that the UN has embarked on a wide-ranging facilitation process to gather the insights and contributions of a wide range of stakeholders beyond government and UN agencies, such as academia, media, private sector, employers and trade unions, as well as civil society. And we equally appreciate uh, the announced and upcoming um, uh, discussions, meetings, uh, advocacy measures that the Director General was referring to. Mr. Director General, as you said it, the current Millennium Development Goals make no reference to human mobility. The post-2015 agenda provides an opportunity to rectify this omission. Germany fully supports IOM's efforts in advocating for migration to be recognized as an essential component of any future development framework and of national development policies and plans. Migration and development are highly interdependent processes, and it would be impossible to create an inclusive, open and transparent framework without addressing mig migration issues. Germany also commends the results of the Open Working Group and its report on the SDGs of July 2014. We appreciate in particular the mentioning of migration in sub-goals 10.7 and 10.7. Point C, the letter referring specifically to remittances. Mr. Director General, sitting here and in New York together and discussing various options is a good way to make progress to move forward. The complex questions that migration involves can only be solved if we talk and cooperate as partners across levels and professions and beyond boundaries. The speech of the distinguished keynote speech speaker was the best kind of motivation for doing so. Germany is ready to do its share and we look forward to a fruitful exchange of views now and in future. We are convinced that a clear focus on the upside and on the chances of migration, of course not without neglecting negative effects, will give our common work more impact. I would hope that many delegations in this room could join this assessment as eloquently elaborated by the keynote speaker. Thank you. A good friend, uh, Peter Sullivan, has been patiently waiting online, and I think, Peter, if you're still there, I'd give you an opportunity just to any reactions, final thoughts, uh, responses you'd like to make. And thank you very much for your patience in waiting on us. Uh, thank you, Bill. Um, well, let me let me start by saying that um, the comments in general that have been advanced, I completely agree with. I would make the point that the consensus that is evident in the IOM's uh, Council's deliberations in the past, the high-level dialogue and the GFMD on this issue, is only relevant if that consensus is part of an action plan that works. We've made some significant advances, as we've seen in the latest draft, but there's a lot more to be done before this can be confirmed or supplemented. And I think that the consensus in capitals has been less impressive than what, what one might have thought. It seems to me that in many capitals, the development and the uh, border control uh, uh, or, or Department of Justice uh, representatives don't communicate uh, as effectively as they might. And you end up with the situation where it is the representatives of the foreign affairs ministries that are left as the advocates for where we are going. Um, I still think that there is an opportunity for greater coordination at national level translating into greater um, effectiveness in pushing the agenda forward in New York. This also implies, as I said earlier, a joinder between New York and Geneva in terms of um, uh, advocacy and effectiveness. Geneva has become largely the locus for debate on migration. IOM's position uh, is significant, obviously, in that. 
So I think that there is more to be done. We certainly <coughs> cannot stand back now and consider that we have reached a point of satisfactory conclusion with regard to the debate that we're on. Specific recommendations, um, some of them have been <coughs> referred to, have to be pressed. IOM's role has been referred to earlier as being essential. I would repeat that. IOM, in many ways, is the center of debate for, Europe, for multilateralism in the area of migration. And that centrality has to be reflected, as I know it is, under the leadership uh, of Bill Swing, in pressing on behalf of uh, the multilateral community and part of the GMG uh, with the other major institutions the case that we're trying to make. But I think that the debate has generally been very good and I agree with the points that have been made. Chair Peter, I think obviously vigilance is the word, and if we leave this room, uh, this uh, session, and we don't go back to our capitals with the clear message that we are not yet where we need to be, we are not yet certain that migration will be included in post-2015, uh, then we will have done a disservice to the time we spent here. So we need to be very vigilant and send that message home. In any way, we can help you because we're in most of your capitals. Let us know if we do a, a joint demarche, but we really need to get everyone on board and actively working toward this. There's very little time now. Uh, let me turn to the panelists here. Let me start, uh, first of all, with our colleague from Ghana.